Welcome, my friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I'm your host, Seishu, and I am thrilled to speak with Zach Prez, who's, you know, really the guy who leads photographers to the promised land, in my opinion, when it comes to <laughs> SEO. Uh, it's a lot of pressure, Zach, but, you know, this is how I see you, man. Thanks, and welcome to the show. I know you've got lots to talk about. Yeah, thanks for having me. I am up to the challenge. This has been done many times before. Uh, yeah, indeed. And, and, and I got to mention this to you, to my audience too. Zach, you are also the blogger behind Photography Spark, which is a phenomenal blog. Uh, talks a lot about, uh, you know, things like SEO, but you, you've, you've sort of gone in different directions recently as well. Uh, things like uh, business, uh, you know, uh, in terms of defining your business or, 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 you know, scaling your business or talking about business and things like that. You've actually partnered with other people to bring out interesting resources that photographers can use to really make their businesses more efficient. And, you know, like SEO uh, and, and things like that, right? Yeah, business, sales, marketing, anything that's going to help you get more clients. Uh, SEO obviously is a small piece of that. Photography Spark covers a, a broader base on general business. Before we get to SEO, which I, I know you, we, we're both excited about, tell us a little bit about how you got started in this business. Sure. I've, I've, my background is business. I have an MBA. I've done web marketing my whole career. And a friend of mine was moving from Southern California to Northern California, straight out of getting her photo degree, wants to start a business in a new area. And she says, you know, Zach, you know this online stuff. I don't know anybody in this area. I want to use my website to reach people. How should I do that? And so it was casual conversations over a coffee, you know, two, three hours, where I was giving her all of these tips about how to focus on Google, what to do to your site, how to build online PR. And she was very successful at it. Within three months, she was ranking number one for everything in Sacramento, which is a pretty major city. And she said, photographers are going nuts to figure out how I did this. Have you ever thought of putting this into a guide? And I said, that's a great idea. <laughs> so yeah. that was in 2010 Excellent. when I wrote my first search engine guide for photographers. And it has since evolved into what it is today being now... Um, the third release is uh, a new SEO cookbook. And that's coming out next week, correct? That's right. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So this is brand new, completely rewritten. Um, I'm really focusing on the key things photographers need to do. I tell them what to do and how to do it, and less of the explanation why, because I found that just confuses people, or they don't care. They just say, tell me how to do it, and I'll do it. So it's very clean cut bite-sized um, and digestible and in, in in typical fashion you've called it recipes so they're really like you know things that they can start to do slowly and and, and see and implement implement uh, in their own websites and things like that and see the results um, that's exciting stuff now you've got something else coming out uh, on uh, Monday I believe and let's talk a little bit about that uh, and, and what's exciting about that for me is that it's tied to this this book that you've just uh, essentially uh, re-edited or edited for for the third time. T t tell us what's coming up on, on Monday. I'm happy to introduce an SEO course. So you can still get just the PDF, which I've always had. Um, but a lot of people want personal support. They have questions specific to their business, like something's up with my Google local listing, or I want to change domain names, or I want to consolidate domains. Uh, is tagging still relevant? How should I label images? And it's all specific to them and their website. And usually I've done expensive one-on-one -on -one consulting on the side um, to do that. Now I have a course where it walks through the whole ebook in video format. So you see more examples of me showing on the screen. You can hear my voice, which is much easier to internalize than trying to read and interpret a book, which works for some, but photographers, creative, visual people, I've found they tend to like to hear me and see me and demonstrate things. Absolutely. And then there's a whole support area where you can ask me questions about anything search related. Um, I'm going to do a quarterly webinar with 
my course members um, to look at their sites, um, give them advice on what to do. So it's much more of a hand holding versus the traditional book, which is do it yourself uh, and interpret it yourself. Absolutely, that's great. Uh, right before we started recording, I told you that I had sat through an hour, an hour and a half long uh, webinar uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, taught by another SEO expert. Uh, obviously, she's phenomenal at what she does, but the fact was she had nothing to do with photography. You know, so I was a little bit, you know, lost in a way. And the fact is, you are more like your niche is really about photograph photographers and being able to help photographers uh, through their entire process of, you know, being online, uh, which I think is phenomenal. Um, when, when it comes down to it, what do you expect this course to do that the book does not do or vice versa? Yeah, uh, it's the it's the difference between reading an article for yourself. Let's say there's something in the news today. You could spend five minutes reading that story and trying to figure out what's happening. Or you ask a friend, hey, what was that story about? And they tell you in five seconds and you're like, oh, okay, I get it. Okay. So really it's me distilling down what is a lot of writing into quick tips that you can understand because you're you're hearing me and and how I emphasize certain things and then I will show on the screen like here's an example of X you want to copy this example. So hey, you know, uh one of the things that that always comes up in my conversations with photographers uh is uh Google's changing their algorithms. Uh, there's Bing, there's Yahoo, there's, you know, name a company, they're, they're doing SEO, and things are changing all the time. And people are nervous. They're like, oh, what's the point in even trying to do anything? Because tomorrow it's going to be all different, right? What do you say to that? What do you say to people like that? Uh, Google has got a very good working system. Uh, they're not pre-launching um, a, a bug-filled system and then having to course correct. Right. Um, they've been working well for a long time. Most of the things that are changing are targeting people that are doing really shady things. It's targeting the big um, spam outfits, pharmaceutical spam. It's targeting sites that just curate and index content and have nothing original. Uh, it's it's targeting people that are paying for links like the major department stores around Christmas who go buy a bunch of links in order to rank better. They're getting blacklisted. It's targeting link exchanges and, and trading links. So as long as you are not trying to fool Google in a major way, most of the updates don't apply to you. Okay. Some of the updates... Um, may be important. Like last week, Google announced a big shift toward mobile friendliness in its search results. So they're now tagging sites that are mobile friendly because if you go to Google for a recommendation and you find a site that's not easy to use and you're on your phone, which most people are, um, that hurts Google's brand reputation and you might stop using them or you have negative sentiment because they're giving you bad stuff. So something like that is critical. Now everybody needs to be mobile friendly if they weren't already. And so that's a big update. Usually big updates like that are fairly clear. Google's going mobile. Um, what photographers then have to figure out is how urgently do they need to make a shift and how much are they going to invest in that? Because you could be talking rebranding or redoing your entire site or moving from a flash or gallery site to a blog. And in, in my opinion, those things are very important to do right away. Um, but photographers might not be putting emphasis on it because they're not getting a lot of traffic from Google yet. So that's where my, my guides kind of say, like, here's how to get the traffic and then evolve your site to, to match what Google's looking for at the same time. That's great. Great, solid advice. I mean, if, if you're listening and you don't have a website that's mobile-friendly, please please pay attention to what Zach just told you. Uh, what other things can photographers glean from your ebook and or the course? Sure. Um, one of the key points I hit on is that most photographers I see are focusing on one phrase, like um, Connecticut wedding photographer, in your case, right? Uh, and that's only one phrase, and it's a very competitive one, Absolutely. among 
hundreds, if not thousands, of ways somebody is going to look for you as a photographer. They might looking be looking for like um, hospital newborn photos, or a specific wedding venue, or Fourth of July family portraits, and all those things require you to create different pages about those things so that Google can match you with somebody that's looking for something. So I get really into the weeds on how to create lots of different pages so you can rank for tons of stuff. Because if you're just ranking for the one phrase, even if you're successful at Connecticut Wedding Photographer, those people are usually just browsing. They don't know what they want yet. They got engaged yesterday. They're not likely to hire you. So even by ranking, your job's not done. So we create lots of pages around a lot of different things. Make those pages really selling tools so they're much more like marketing brochures than a session post from last weekend. Uh, and then we talk about how to move up the ranks by uh, getting links from other sites, which is not easy. I can't just call you up and say, hey, you know, can you link to me? Right. Or you link to me and I'll link to you, which Google doesn't like either. Right. So we really get into how to build links, which is the most important and difficult part of search engines. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that uh, propelled Tiffin Box, for instance, was guest blogging. Um, I know Google has uh, some new, uh, I guess, policies about guest blogging. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, really what guest blogging does, it does two things. Um, those people are, since, like, if I'm featured on your site, like I am right now, then I go tell my entire audience, hey, look, I was on Tiffin Box. And so that spreads links and PR and attention. So that's one benefit of guest blogging. The other is you can probably post with higher frequency since you're not having to spend your time writing all this stuff. So I do the same for Photography Spark. I get articles put to my site which allows me to blog more regularly. And that's something Google enjoys. They, they are forced to come back to a site more often if it's always changing because it wants to be current. And so it's going to look at your site. Um, to see what's changed. So like a photographer should be blogging at least once a month, preferably once a week. More than once a week, I wouldn't force it. Less than once, once a month, you're going to notice big fluctuations and uh, probably is detrimental to your site if you're not blogging at least once a month mm -hmm. or at least not you know, perfect. Some of the things uh, Google is looking at is contributed articles since Google is really looking at um, to rank a site, it needs to be credible. You need to have experience. And one way to show credibility is by getting featured lots of places. Well, that's very different than me posting an article to an article directory that requires no knowledge on my part, um, no authority in the industry. They're just big directory systems. So before, you used to hear about article posting as the way to get ranked easily by submitting to all these directories, that has changed. What hasn't changed is if you can get featured on major blogs by contributing a valid post with a lot of text and great images, that's still very valuable. And that's why people will guest post for sites like yours and mine because they want the value of the PR and the links and it takes a lot of time to, to create that good material. Absolutely. Uh, again, solid information that you, you know you 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 don't ever surprise me man with all the stuff that you know about this stuff <laughs> really it's great um let me ask you this though uh we've talked a little a few about a few things that have challenged uh, photographers uh in terms of seo what has challenged you personally for seo yeah what what well, has what has confounded you the most and you go oh man i i, I just is throws me for a loop. I don't know what Google's all, do, all uh, doing right now. Is that, is that, do you have any sort of examples of that? Well, Google Local is, is highly critical. If you go search for any local business, you're going to see a bunch of map listings at the top. And they have changed what they call that from um, Google Maps to Google Places to Google Plus. Now it's Google My Business. Right. Really, they're all the same thing. And they don't have a lot of information on how that works, other than they're looking at proximity, how close is the searcher to where your address is, how many reviews do you have, how many links does your website have, and that's about it. And it's really unclear, you know, how to consolidate the pages that Google has automatically generated for you. Um, 
what is a good review policy? Like if I go out and ask 10 people for a review today, does that penalize me because it's not natural? So the industry has some insights to these things, which I outline in the guide, but a lot of it's still kind of a black hole. And it's so important to be able to show there because it shows above the natural results. Sure. Um, so that's one thing that confuses me. The other is kind of the future of Google+. Plus. I think everybody in the market is saying it's not relevant. People aren't using it. We're not going to spend time on it. And Google has yet to say the same. So they're still <laughs> kind of hooking people saying yeah. it's important. Yeah. Yet at the same time, you know, they they no longer have their head of Google Plus who left the company. They're not showing your headshot next to your articles from your website and search anymore. So they're pulling out a lot of features. Right. But yet they still say you have to do it. Right. I, so I just talked to a photographer uh, about four or five days ago who had uh, 179,000 people following her on Google Plus. Wow. I was like astounded i was like i didn't even know that many people existed on google plus yeah other than uh, trey ratcliffe who <laughs> right. google suggests that you follow when you're setting up your profile that's right i i don't think i've seen a number that high and i wonder is that actually affecting you know that person's search rank is it helpful is it building the business or not or is it just a number like a lot of facebook followers oh indeed lots of discussions that we can have and i'm sure you're going to have in your forum uh which is part of the cookbook course, which is the SEO cookbook course, which you're also launching on Monday. Um, do people who, who, who sign up for the uh, SEO cookbook course automatically receive the, the new version of the, uh, the guide? Yeah. yeah, they'll get the PDF okay. and all the videos and bonus worksheets and access to me. How often are you refreshing these videos? Are you constantly making sure that they, they're current, they're, they're, they're you know, everyone's got to be happy about that. You know, like where you, you just go in and you found something out and you go, oh, this, this, this deserves a new video. You're going to post something up and upgrade people with those videos? Yeah, actually, in the time from after I created the cookbook, which was maybe a month ago and started doing videos, then Google had the mobile announcement. So I had to add a page on that, you know, and, and go add add that context as well. So I do plan on keeping it up to date. Awesome. Uh, Zach, thank you so much. Uh, you know, you are one of those guys who inspires me. I appreciate your your time, um, especially today with lots of things going on out of my home. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Uh, I look forward to to being a part of this this uh, awesome course, if, if you'd have me. Um, I'd love to be a part of it, learn more from you, of course, uh, and perhaps help other people as well. Uh, in the industry do better at what they are meant to be doing. So thanks for that. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's fun talking about this. Until next time, Zach. Take care. Bye. Okay.